Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Each year, millions of outdoor enthusiasts get a jump start on the boating season. For fishermen, hikers, campers, and other recreationists, the first few days of spring-like weather are the signal that it's time to launch their boats on a favorite lake, stream, or river. Whether a canoe, a john boat, skiff, car topper, or other small craft, these boaters tend to think more about the size of the fish in the lake than about being safe boaters. And all too often, this all-too-casual approach can lead to tragic consequences. After a long winter, it was exactly the kind of day that Jake McDermott and Rudy Bellows were waiting for. A chance to get back out on the lake, break out the rods and a few beers maybe even catch a fish or two. Jake McDermott, 43, father of two, the service manager at a local car dealer, his high school friend and fishing partner, Rudy Bellows, a 35-year-old bachelor and a sales manager for an auto parts distributor. Around noon, they paddled out toward the middle of the lake to try their luck at a favorite spot. The air was warming up, but the water temperature was still around 50 degrees. Jake knew the fish held close to the submerged tree and ended up snagging his lure on one of the branches. One last good tug, and he might pull it free. According to Bellow's statement to the police, when Jake first fell in, he didn't think it was a serious situation. But after a few seconds, he realized that his friend was floundering and needed help fast. But when he lost his balance and fell in, he told us he was immediately disoriented and could barely stay afloat. In the end, it was all he could do to save himself. Jake McDermott drowned just a few yards from his capsized boat in about eight feet of water. A tragic accident? Of course, they always are. But a freak accident? Far from it. In fact, everything about Jake McDermott's drowning, from where it happened to what caused it, is typical of the vast majority of fatal boating accidents that happen every year. If that sounds surprising, well, that's part of the problem. You see, contrary to popular belief, the typical accident doesn't involve a large offshore boat floundering in high seas and gale force winds. The circumstances in which most fatal accidents occur are far less dramatic. Instead of big water, the typical accident happens inland, on lakes and rivers, the small ponds and streams. And in more cases than not, it's the non-traditional boater who's involved. Fishermen, hunters, campers, people who are likely to be on the water in the spring or the fall months. And usually, it's small boats, 16 feet or less, either with no motor or one of 10 horsepower or less. Almost half of all boating fatalities happen in broad daylight and in flat, calm conditions. And most of the time, the boat isn't even underway. Thanks, Jim. Of course, no two boating accidents are exactly alike, but in all too many cases, the common denominator is alcohol. In fact, 60% of all boating deaths are somehow alcohol-related. Part of the problem is that drinking while boating is almost a tradition. The one item you can bet will be on board is a cooler full of beer. But when out in the boat, the alcohol in just two or three drinks can significantly affect your balance, your vision, your judgment, 
and your ability to react quickly in case of an emergency. And don't for a minute fall for the myth that beer or wine is any less intoxicating than hard liquor. A can of beer or a glass of wine contain the same amount of alcohol as a shot of whiskey. It doesn't take much alcohol to affect your coordination. And even the slightest sense of unsteadiness can transform small boats like these into highly unstable and dangerous platforms. Under no circumstances should a boat be overloaded or overpowered. And a small boat is no place to stand up. If you have to change positions, keep a low profile and keep your weight centered toward the middle of the boat. Falling out of a boat is always an embarrassing and very often an unpleasant experience. But for the boater who's been drinking, an unexpected plunge could prove deadly. It may be hard to believe, but the inebriated person whose head is underwater can become so disoriented as to swim downward to their death rather than to the surface and safety. You know, the real tragedy of practically every boating-related drowning is that it could have been easily prevented. Wearing a personal flotation device, a PFD, is by far the single most important safety measure you can take when boating. It's a point we've been stressing for years and one that simply cannot be overemphasized. Look at it this way. Virtually every single boating-related drowning could be eliminated if the victim had been wearing a PFD. It's a time of the year when most boats have long since been hauled out of the water. But for more than two million waterfowlers in North America, it's the start of their boating season. Some may use a duck boat to head out to a water blind. For others, their boat may be nothing more than a dinghy used to set out decoys. In either case, these boaters operate in one of the most hostile boating environments of all, near freezing water. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather, Monday's edition. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting tonight's show. Uh, Aviation Weather Unit webpage uh, still due to uh, change on Friday, July 14th. Uh, so coming up here pretty quick. So take the time to check the new links out, uh, the new charts, PIREPS, and uh, terminal aviation forecasts and other forecasts uh, before it kicks in and uh, send us any emails about what you think of it. Moving on to the fire danger, uh, a lot less this week here Monday than it was last week up here in the north. High fire danger there, western Brooks Range on up uh, to the western north slope and then still pretty extreme here from south side of the eastern Brooks Range almost down into the northern Yukon Flats with an area of high fire danger surrounding that. That's about it, fire danger-wise, the remainder of the state, uh, not looking too bad. And for the satellite imagery today, uh, a lot of clouds yet, uh, not quite as thick as they have been, and still some areas of rain and showers there, but breaking out here up along the northeast Gulf Coast. And also a narrow band of some sunshine here from eastern Norton Sound, the Mulatto Hills. Southeastward, uh, looks like cutting into the extreme northern Cusquam Valley, but not quite making it, uh, well, a little bit of clearing here over northern Cook Inlet, but more moisture system exiting the southeast Bering Sea here, bringing rain, upper level low, actually two of them, another upper center back through here, drifting westward, and one down to the south, bringing the uh, wet conditions, clouds into Kodiak Island, and that uh, shifting up toward the southern Kenai Peninsula, and also pushing off to the east there with uh, kind of a warm front sort of type precipitation uh, starting to push in toward the uh, coast of Prince of Wales Island and Dixon Entrance. Otherwise, uh, a little bit of a break through the central areas and still uh, uh, some shower chances farther to the north. Thunderstorms not all that extensive today, really uh, a lot of cloud cover, so not uh, much afternoon heating or daytime heating. So there were some isolated thunderstrikes over the eastern interior on into Canada, but nothing too extensive. And then there's clouds extending all the way up there to the Arctic coast. A few breaks over from about Arctic Village up to toward Kaktovik and Barter Island. Otherwise, uh, they thin a little over the north slope, but a pretty cloudy day up there across actually the northern half of the state. Of course, out into the Bering Sea, seen some breaks south of St. Lawrence Island here, all the way down to uh, the Pribilofs. May have seen some sunshine today as well as... Uh, portions of the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians, then back into the clouds there for ADAC and Atka, or from Atka, especially for ADAC, and on out to the west, rain and gusty southerly winds there towards Shimyo, that next front 
uh, that's pushing slowly eastward, main push off to the north initially, but it'll be slowly advancing to the east. Uh, today we had rain probably to Amchitka Island here and then back to the west. The main low center still just off to the southwest, so about 999 millibar center there, just edging its way onto the map here for the afternoon uh, analysis. And another weak low there, mostly a reflection of the upper system over Nunavak Island. Some clouds and few showers of that out in the southwest and moisture here pushing eastward with that low center just tracking uh, just south of Sitkanak and that putting clouds and areas of rain and showers across Kodiak Island back to the Aleutian Range and the breaks here over the northern Gulf of Alaska. And then uh, kind of scattering out shower wise, I mentioned on the southeast coast, but some moisture streaming northeastward there toward mostly Dixon Entrance and uh, Prince of Wales Island. For tonight, uh, that'll continue as that weak front uh, pushes up right up to the coastline by about four o'clock tomorrow morning. And uh, rain and fog heaviest uh, to the west and lighter and more scattered coming showery toward the east there, especially toward Hyder and Stewart, where may not much may not see much at all there. And also to the north, uh, still looking at a chance of showers, but not too heavy on the precipitation amounts. And they'll be more scattered along the North Gulf Coast. Evening thunderstorms here over this eastern and southeast interior areas, but uh, nothing really widespread as far as thunderstorm activity goes. Showers may be a little more widespread here. Uh, kind of a pretty good area of showers from the Copper River Basin into the eastern Tanana Valley tapering off back to the west. Look for increasing clearing here over the west, uh, partly to uh, mostly cloudy with the mostly cloudy up to the north there with the risk of a few showers, mostly clear down to the south, and then some low stuff. Bristol Bay might push inland into Togiak Bay there, but uh, maybe some drizzle and fog with that, and some leftover showers. Uh, with the uh, weakening upper level system now that's starting to drop southward. The other center pulling eastward here with that low center toward the southeast coast. So we've got high pressure building out here to the west over the Bering Sea, western Bering Sea. So basically dry conditions, light winds, considerable low clouds and fog anywhere possible there from the Bering Strait or the Chukchi Sea. We'll uh, throw some drizzle in up in that area as well. But uh, a lot of low clouds and fog here from that area all the way down to the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula and also the eastern Arctic coast. Uh, easterly winds 15, 25 miles an hour, maybe a few higher gusts there, but in that 20 to 25 knot range there for the marine areas and then much lighter inland. Uh, so it could be a little breezy over the north slope both tonight and tomorrow with uh, maybe a few scattered showers there, but the main rain producing storminess out here to the west holding out there. Uh, really not making much eastward advancement there with the rain barely, just maybe some scattered shower chances getting into the central Aleutians with the main flow south to north out here. And that due to building upper high pressure over the eastern Bering Sea in the western part of the state. And for tomorrow, again, uh, warming up, more sunshine, upper level high pressure, freezing levels going up, warmer air aloft, so starting a warming trend here that will even begin to show up over south central Alaska. Take a little longer in the eastern interior. Look for some scattered afternoon thunderstorms. Still kind of a mostly cloudy day. May see a little bit more clearing than what you saw today uh, from the uh, actually Copper River Basin northward. Look for variable clouds, north slope, uh, pretty well mostly cloudy, foggy at times there. The central eastern Arctic coast, but easterly flow tending to clear it out on the west side. And then this trough not really producing much in the way of anything at all. Just uh, kind of a thermal feature there with maybe some scattered thunderstorms, eastern Brooks Range area, just a risk. And then this upper trough and surface low coming eastward, still off the coast, so that's going to uh, send several bands of uh, showers that are kind of rotating around the center like a pinwheel into mostly the southern southeast coast. A little general area of rainfall right through here it'll be coming in. So kind of a wet, unsettled, cool day yet tomorrow for the panhandle. But we've got high pressure building out here to the west. No change in the conditions uh, tomorrow from what you saw today here for the Bering Sea, except the rain pushing farther into the central Aleutians there. Those uh, south to southeast winds coming up uh, somewhat there, but nothing more than 20 to 30 knots along and in advance of the front. Light variable winds in the forecast tomorrow for the eastern Aleutians, uh, Dutch Harbor, Nikolsky in those areas, and really not much in the way of wind for the Alaska Peninsula or the Bering Sea as well. And moving ahead to the outlook for Wednesday, 
And see a lot more clearing now over the interior. We've got uh, surface ridge right along the coast. Light winds there. Low clouds and fog. Uh, pretty extensive out here. Some of which could push inland during the overnight hours. But uh, warmer and uh, definitely drier over the interior. Maybe some thunderstorms developing there over the Brooks Range. Just a risk here over the Alaska Range. Otherwise, not much at all. Just sunshine temperatures warming into the 70s and 80s uh, across much of the interior south of the Brooks Range. Sunny and warmer, Kodiak Island, weak northwest flow there. Alaska Peninsula looking good, as well as Prince William Sound, the North Gulf Coast. And this front really weakening, the precipitation band narrowing, getting thinner, but uh, the front itself pushing very close to the Pribilofs. Rain and fog there extending down to kind of the warm front feature here. So some rain, fog, drizzle, low IFR or IFR, possibly some low IFR there reaching uh, maybe false pass, but definitely for the eastern Aleutians, pretty low flying conditions. A little bit better back out to the west with showers from Atka all the way out to Shimia and Attu. Gulf of Alaska looking pretty good. Light wind conditions uh, all across the Gulf, southern uh, Alaska, and really no wind at all over the interior. Except for up along the Arctic coast, uh, maybe easterly is holding in that 20 knot range there, but lighter inland and scattered showers, mostly cloudy skies, upper level low there, still close enough to keep it uh, kind of cool and unsettled here for the next couple of days, but gradually improving and getting drier. For the temperatures down there today, mid to upper 50s with a 56 at Cloak, uh, 57 there at Petersburg, up to 59 at Skagway, same thing at Stewart. Upper 50s for the North Gulf Coast from Yakutat to Cordova, 58 there in Seward, then back to 59 for Homer. Mid 60s, Kenai Peninsula at Kenai with 64, but Palmer just 60, back up to 64 in Talkeetna. 50 degrees this afternoon, kind of cool there for Gulcana for a July temperature in the afternoon. Otherwise, uh, upper 50s there for the eastern Tanana Valley with 59 at Eagle, but Fort Yukon, 71 degrees and a 66 there at Tanana, but back down to 53 at Bettles, 59 at Anatovic. Lower to mid 40s along the Arctic coast with 50s inland areas like uh, Atasuka 52, Point Lay 57, and upper 50s here over the northwest, Kivalina 57, Kotzebue 52, and a 67 degree reading there at uh, Galena and McGrath. Cooling into the uh, upper 50s, Yukon Cusquam Delta, but uh, Unilaclete up to 62, and Nome had 55. The other side of the peninsula, though, Shishmaref at 45. Upper 40s there for St. Lawrence Island, mid 50s along the southwest coast, cool to near 50 here near the Pribilofs. Lower to mid 50s central Aleutians, mid 40s out there at Chimia, and 50 degrees even on Alaska, and with lower to mid 50s here at the Alaska Peninsula, King Salmon pushing past 60 to 62 degrees. Lows for tonight, uh, down in the upper 40s for Bristol Bay there and the Alaska Peninsula, as well as the Aleutians in the Bering Sea, mid 40s, St. Lawrence Island. Mild here, central interior off to the northeast with uh, 55 to 60 for those lows, otherwise upper 40s to mid 50s, south of the Alaska Range. Down to the, Arctic, or down to the North Gulf Coast, looks like mid to upper 40s there, 45 to 50 for the lows for the Panhandle. Mid 30s, 35 to 40 north of the Brooks Range out to the Arctic coast. Highs for tomorrow, uh, quite uh, warming up out here in the west with uh, 70s now. Cusquam Valley, mid uh, Yukon, Cusquam River Valley areas, but still near 70 in the Delta and the inland areas, near 60 or upper 50s along the coast. With uh, 70s here, Noatak Valley to lower 80s there as you cross. Uh, uh, let's see, that's the Koyukuk Valley with Bettles. Forecast high tomorrow, 83 degrees, a big jump from today. And mid-70s across the Tanana Valley, uh, north of the White Mountains there with uh, mid-60s across the Copper River Basin and upper 50s to near 60 for the southeast coast, taking a little longer to improve there. And with that will go some marginal VFR as well as IFR here to start the day out tomorrow. And that will extend up along the eastern Alaska Range, Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains, central Arctic coast. Look for areas of IFR there from uh, the central coast on over to about uh, Dead Horse and New Exit. Otherwise, an extensive area of IFR here, eastern Bering Sea with the light wind conditions right down to the peninsula on Alaska Island. But uh, better conditions looks like forecasting marginal up through the Bering Strait was a patch of IFR. And for tomorrow afternoon, got a zone of IFR, St. Matthew Island continuing right down to the Bering Sea side of the peninsula but generally off the coast here of uh, the southwest with Norton Sound looking VFR, 
narrow area of marginal stuff here from the eastern Aleutians northwest, Sokden IFR farther out to the west, and the eastern central Arctic coast. Uh, that IFR probably pulling offshore close to it uh, in the afternoon. Lots of EFR over the interior, some lingering marginal stuff, especially in the morning hours here for the Alaska Range, and a little more extensive there to the east. Southeast coast there, areas of marginal VFR, uh, pretty uh, common. For the uh, passes, Anatuvik, good VFR on either approach tomorrow, same forecast for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR, rainy VFR. Now windy, starting out marginal, uh, gradually improving to VFR tomorrow afternoon. So lowest conditions in the morning, risk of a thunderstorm. Same trend for both Isabella and Mentasta, chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon. Otherwise conditions starting out kind of low and improving, but linger or, or a lagging there in Mentastas could start at IFR and only become v marginal in the afternoon. And for Tanita though, back into VFR, VFR for Portage as well, even in the morning. And Chilkoot and White, IFR gradually improving to marginal. And for the freezing levels, uh, again, upper level low pulling into the Gulf of Alaska, coldest air aloft here from there, and then up across the panhandle into the uh, western Canada, northwest Canada, and upper level high pressure over the northern interior, you got 10,000 feet, and also building high pressure here, right through here, so that southerly flow pulling 12,000 feet there into the south central Bering Sea. And for icing uh, west of the ridge there, southerly flow, we've got uh, icing here spreading eastward actually to the central Aleutians tomorrow, of about 8,000 feet or so back to the west and north, Bering Sea central and east side, pretty good. Much of the interior icing free, pretty good chance or the best chance will be here over the southeast coast above about six to 7,000 feet. And that'll extend up in across the eastern interior areas uh, possibly mixed. And for the uh, jet stream, big upper high right over the north slope, we've got northeasterly flow at about 80 knots here at uh, 30,000 feet across the southeast interior there right down to the eastern Gulf Coast and then coming back around and then northwest at 100 knots building ridge out through here. Eventually these two will combine and we'll have a ridge right up the west coast there and hotter, drier conditions developing over the interior for 9,000 feet. Light winds, weak low, light winds southeast coast, but 20 to 25, some pretty good northeasterlies here coming uh, across the Copper River Basin and turning north, 25 there across the Aleutian Range and out of Kamishak Bay and Kodiak, but then very light, high pressure along the west coast all the way up to the north. Easterlies 15 to 20, maybe 25 along the Arctic coast and much windier out west, south 40 knots ahead of that front pushing in toward the western Aleutians, falling back to 20 behind the front toward Chimianat too. That same pattern, about 3,000 feet, uh, 35 to 45 knot winds ahead of the front here, even down 3,000 feet, uh, much lighter to the east, high pressure, light variable winds, northerlies 15, maybe up to 30 knots coming in a narrow band here off the western Alaska range down across Kodiak Island. Otherwise, uh, 20 knot winds off the southeast coast, so looking light and variable. And for turbulence, below 3,000 feet up there on the north slope and Arctic coast, areas of uh, below 3,000 also for the pan, it'll much less there. And then another area out over the uh, central Bering Sea, south central Bering and the Aleutians for the icing or the, the sea ice here. Uh, easterly winds are going to uh, continue. So this area is continue to open up and push that way. Some of this might get pushed back down toward the coast because of those east northeast winds. Otherwise, uh, the whole pattern continues to melt. Uh, keep the trend it's been showing here for the last several days. And for the southeast coast here, southeast, 20 to 25 knots, except up to the north there, east at 15. Southeast 25 in the forecast for Clarence Strait, otherwise uh, variable 10 for Stevens Passage up to the north. Wednesday, north 10 to 15, even for Lynn Canal, then east 15 for Clarence Strait, south to east, southeast, east to southeast, 10 to 15, light winds for the panhandle here, but kind of... Uh, Coming back around to the northwest there on the extreme north coast in the afternoon, seas just five to six feet. Light variable winds, north Gulf Coast tomorrow, southwest 10 for both Cook Inlet and Prince William Sound. Call it 15 for Cook Inlet. And then small craft advisories here, east side of Kodiak Island, up across the Barrens, west winds 25 knots, seas six feet. And then for Wednesday, those become northeast to 25 there on the east side of Kodiak, and then southeast 15 for the Barrens west becoming northwest, but just 15 knots for the North Gulf Coast, 15 to 20 knot southwest winds for the Cook Inlet area, all the way down to Shelikoff Strait. And for Bristol Bay, 15 out of the west tomorrow, westerlies 15 to 20 on the Pacific side of the peninsula. 
Seas five to six feet, three feet here on the Bering side. And then for the next day, we've got west winds up to 20 there, forecast for Bristol Bay and 25 knot northwest winds from Sitkanak to Castle Cape, falling back to 15 out of the west and northwest for the peninsula. Aleutians on Alaska Island, light variable winds at 10. And then from about Nikolsky westward, pick up the small craft advisories ahead of the front. 30 knot winds there are Atka in the forecast all the way back to Shimia. And the next day, Southerlies, 25 knots here. Western zones fall back to 20, drop to 20 there for the central Aleutians and just uh, south-southwest 15 to 20 for the Fox Islands. Southwest coast, light variable winds at 10 knots. Same thing for the Pribilof, St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island, north at 10. Wednesday's forecast, uh, south of Nunavak Island, westerly breezes at 15, otherwise southeast 15, increasing to 20 knots towards St. Lawrence Island. Small craft advisories back in the picture here for the Pribilof, southeast 25, but seas only three feet and nine, uh, nine feet, that's uh, a little more like it there for the seas for St. Matthew Island there from there, the island westwards where you see the 30 knots. And then for the Arctic coast, eastern Beaufort Sea coast is the central coast, east 20 tomorrow, four to five foot seas in the ice-free areas. East 25 on the west side turns northeast there from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, lightens up to northwest 15 for the Chukchi Sea. Then westerlies, light westerlies the next day here from uh, Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort and then a uh, band of 25 knot easterlies there on the west side with five foot seas, otherwise 15 to maybe 20 on the east side there, three to four foot seas. Looking at tonight again, uh, light rain, fog, clouds definitely here spreading in, mostly over the southern and central panhandle, more showery to the north. Evening thunderstorms scattered, isolated with uh, showers, Copper River Basin into the eastern Tanaha Valley. Uh, clear and dry out to the west with uh, low clouds and fog over the Bering Sea. Front advancing slowly eastward with rainfall and some uh, wind into the central Aleutians with the main low center hanging back to the west. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.